Uh, but we'll move on to the Vercoin Foundation. So we did have our first um, our first board meeting earlier this month. Um, and as you guys saw in the dev update, uh, there's currently nine members of the Vercoin Foundation board. This first uh, board meeting was required by our lawyers in order to finalize the 501c3 uh, paperwork uh, for us to be a nonprofit foundation um, in the United States, which um, there's not many. I think that uh, I only saw one other cryptocurrency related nonprofit um, in the United States. Most foundations that you see in crypto are uh, held in other countries. Um, so uh, this is kind of nice because you're able to actually donate to the foundation um, and get a tax write off if you're here in the United States. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that 501c3 applies to anybody outside of the United States. So um, it is a little bit of a benefit to us here in the United States. But uh, there's nine members on the board. Um, the foundation, the whole purpose of the foundation is to exist as a legal entity that owns any trademarks, copyrights, or donated funds. Also, if we're doing any sort of merchandise, like something that people have asked me about is why we don't have Super Chat or donations allowed on our YouTube channel, um, or even ads for that sense. Uh, because right now we want to make sure that we have a legal entity that if anybody were to donate uh, through any platform like YouTube, Twitch, or anything like that, um, it's going to that legal entity and not going to whomever owns the Vercoin YouTube page. Uh, we wanted to go to that legal entity. Um, that way, everything from a legal standpoint um, is much easier to keep track of. Um, so uh, if you go to Vercoin dot foundation uh that's going to be the url for the foundation once the website gets finalized um but so there you'll be able to see the board members you'll be able to see the minutes uh from our meetings uh right now i think we're looking to meet every quarter um depending unless something major comes up then we can call an emergency meeting um but uh just to handle normal business uh, we're going to do every quarter and uh, you'll be able to see the minutes of what we talked about, what we discussed, who voted on what. Um, and so we'll be completely transparent, kind of like we are with everything when it comes to Vercoin. We try to be as transparent as possible um, because at the end of the day, it's a community coin. And we want you guys to be included in on the decision making process and kind of where we're we're going as a board. Um, so, James, did you want to comment in, uh, on the foundation, kind of your vision of how you're seeing it um, and uh, in how you think it's going to benefit the project as a whole? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the the next logical step for you know scaling Vercoin, so to speak. I mean, as time goes on, uh, and interest in Vercoin increases, and the number of users increase, uh, it, it becomes unrealistic uh, for myself to be the the sort of single point of failure when it comes to the project's finances and online presence and and so on. Uh, so it makes sense now that, you know, we're a lot bigger than we were, you know, two, three years ago uh, to have a separate legal entity uh, whose sole responsibility it is, is to manage the development of Vercoin uh, and also to, you know, remove legal liability from myself uh, in a lot of ways uh, on, you know, what happens with the donations and, and, you know, what's on the website, that kind of thing. Uh, it makes more sense that some other entity should organize that that's larger than myself yeah definitely and especially once now that the sec and you know these government entities here in the united states are starting to dig into crypto and starting to take a hard look at them um i'd rather them coming to the foundation for questions than showing up you know at your doorstep for for questions so um you know it, being able to to Hire lawyers to have representation. Um, it just it's the next step in uh, facilitating this as a currency and not just a um, a project that's that's being run by a few people. We, um, and, and 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 really from a merchant adoption standpoint, um, having a five hundred one c three. Um, is going to give merchants much more comfort in being able to go down the road of accepting Vertcoin as payment um, because they know that, look, 
you can't get to the point of a 501c3 if you're doing some shady stuff, if you're not on the up and up when it comes to the law and, and, and following the law to the T. Because um, I know um, Justin was talking to me uh, with regards to getting stuff squared away with VertBase. And he said, you know, the fact that VertCoin um, is getting a 501c3 foundation set up, um, also the fact that we don't, we didn't do an ICO, no airdrops or anything like that, that really broke down a lot of the barriers that some of the uh, people in ba banking institution and money transfer had when it came to uh, dealing with people in, in the crypto space. It, it broke down a lot of those barriers. So it made things a little bit easier to kind of make that bridge between the current financial system and the cryptocurrency system that everybody in this space is trying to build. For sure. And you, and you alluded to it before, at least in the US, um, donations would be tax deductible. Uh, so whilst we wouldn't be able to accept anonymous crypto donations anymore, as we do at present, uh, we will be able to accept identified donations from individuals. And those individuals can then uh, deduct that from their tax return. So uh, the, the hope is that that might spur uh, additional giving from a different set of people that currently give uh, so that uh, we can pay for more interesting things like developers. So with, with that, I guess, since we can't accept anonymous crypto donations anymore, um, how would individuals outside of the United States uh, donate to the foundation in order to uh, help with the development of the project? Uh, well, they can still donate, but they just have to be identified. We, we have to KYC them. Okay. Yeah. So I, I know for some people, KYC is a big, touchy issue. But uh, unfortunately, because we are now dealing with tax exemptions and things of that nature, um, there are some limitations on the ability for us to be able to accept donations. Um internationally and also inside the United States. The bonus if you're inside of the United States is you can write uh, you can write us a check, you can you know send us vertcoin um, and then you can tax deduct that uh, through your taxes. So um, more information is going to be coming out about this. I know somebody asked so is the foundation finalized now? We everything is done on our end. Um, we're waiting for the lawyers to file paperwork. Um, so uh, it's pretty close to being, I mean, we had our, we had to have our first board meeting just so we could finalize officers. We could finalize, um, addresses and, and, and things of that nature. And once the lawyers file all the paperwork and come back and say, you've been recognized by the IRS as a 501 C three, then we can move forward with setting up uh, bank accounts and any other sort of, uh, internal infrastructure that we need to set up in order to have the foundation, uh, good to go, uh, to, uh, allow for donations and tax exempt uh, donations here in the United States. Um, so uh, it's very close. Uh, we're just waiting on the lawyers to wrap up their end.